Welcome, everybody. Okay, hang on one more second here. We are actually live. Welcome, Robert Hollis, to our Zoom call this week. This is week four in the Escape Your Matrix. Uh, I'm just going to wait one more second because I am i don't know if I'm actually live yet. Now I'm live. All right, now I'm live. Okay, we can start. All right. So anyway, I'm going to say that one more time. Welcome, Robert Hollis, to the whole name, Robert Hollis. Okay. <laughs> uh, week four, we're going to talk about tools and systems today. And if you guys aren't familiar with this man here, he's a 100K affiliate, soon to be 250K affiliate in My Daily Choice. But before My Daily Choice, this man was uh, in network marketing since before Josh was born. We don't talk about that a lot, but it is what it is. <laughs> so we take notes from Robert. Let's just put it that way. He's a, a complete inspiration. He has the real rags to riches story that we all can kind of identify with. And he's completely self-made with the help of, of course, his team. Not just that. Let's go into details on that just for briefly while we introduce you. He is a seven-figure income earner in this industry, as well as help create, what, 53 other millionaires? 54 now. 54 now. So you've helped train and mentor 54 people to become millionaires themselves, nine of which have turned and become network marketing company owners. And he is responsible for a near 1 million person team. So I honestly don't know anybody like Robert. And we are ex like extremely lucky and excited that he decided to join our business and work with us. And uh, we got to hang out uh, locally in Las Vegas and we got to meet and all of that. And when we met uh, Terry and Robert, we just knew right away that these people were just meant for us, really, because their Amen. hearts are pure, and we love working with them. So, Robert, without any further ado, let's get this training started. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All righty. So, we have some burning questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not much of a systems person myself. I use our system. If you go to my website, actually, it goes straight to a capture page from our back office. I use the tools. Uh, but some people that have even previous network marketing experience, maybe their company didn't have a system or didn't have any tools, and that's very common in this space, uh, and maybe they don't know how to use the ones that we have now that are free in our company. Um, so we need you to tell us how you do what you do because we're all curious, and the, the production on your team, the duplication that is just taking fire in your team right now is really – just impressive. So we want to know. Um, question. My first question for you, Robert, is how do you leverage Zoom calls to uh, promote your? Well, actually, how do you promote? How do you use Zoom calls in your team? How are you using it? Because I'm just now okay. how to use it. This is a new technology for me. Um, I'm behind the time, so we want to learn <laughs> how do you use Zoom calls to leverage your team? Because this is a tool. It's not necessarily our, our system, but it is a tool that you use in your business. So right. So take it away. Well, well, the first thing, first thing I want to say is I'm so honored and blessed to be on here. So thank you so much, Jenna. Uh, uh, you and Joss has treated us like family and made us feel like home here. And um, I'm just glad that Terry asked me to find her a company and uh, a good sponsor and an upline. I found you and, and of course you're connected to MDC. And so I'm just really honored to be on here and, uh, and just share with people the things that have allowed uh, me to generate, you know, uh, success loves speed. Uh, people now have a eight second attention span. And if we can't get them results immediately, they're on to the next thing. It's just bizarre. So um, the, also, I'd like to just do a shout out to the other leaders that have already been on here. Uh, I learned not only stuff from you all the time, Jenna, but Josh, when he did the game plans, and then the butlers last week, wow, you know, I, I've rewatched that training three times. And, and because I do have a large following, but I still think I track people because <clears throat> my belief in spirituality of who I am is how I do mass attraction. But if I can also learn how to use social media the correct way, <laughs> that just makes the game easier for me. So I wanted to say that before we got started. One of the, I'd love to share really quickly two philosophies and they'll be short and sweet. So 30 years ago, you know, uh, I meet my mentor and he said a couple of things to me that people are still using today. And here's one of them. Don't do what works. Only do what duplicates. So a lot of people will start doing something. And there's a phrase that he would also say, the worst kind of success is a little. 
because because if we do something and it starts to work, then we won't listen to anybody else and we just keep doing that thing, getting little results instead of big results. So now my philosophy came from this one part is 95% of people are not sales types. So if you're trying to teach them salesy stuff, they're just gonna go, oh, okay, thanks, and then they're not gonna do anything. <laughs> So here's the first three philosophies that you got to get across to people and get them across fast. Now, MDC and HempWorks makes this job for us a million times easier than other companies, and I'll prove it. First one is when people first hear, they're looking for a reason not to listen. Is that crazy? So when you first say something or make a post or do anything, you want to be able to get them to go, wait a minute, this makes sense. If it makes sense, it makes dollars. So you got to do things at the beginning of your anything you're doing that gets them to go, wait a minute, this sounds different. And that's why I like working with Jenna because she's not like anybody else. She's different. So that's what gets her attention. A lot of people are trying to pretend to be somebody else and that doesn't work very well. You know, be you, all right? The second part of it is after they go, wait a minute, this makes sense, the very next thing that they're saying, so how do you get your results? Now, I'm not saying they say that, they think this. So we got CBD and everything's out there and people see the news clips and they're like in their mind going, uh, wow, this is fascinating. But now their mind goes into, oh, I'm not going door to door or any other stupid stuff that someone could think. So this is the point where you got to do duplicatable things. So they go, wait a minute, Jenna, is that all you do? Wait, come on. Is that all you do? And so you'll see me work this into the tools, right? Because I could try to do my very best in explaining the sprays or I could let Josh's video do it. <laughs> and I was so focused on HempWorks when Jenna and Josh first shared this with me that that's all I was doing. And then we know that there's a lot of countries that don't get hemp oil or hemp products, right? So then I'm going, well, you know, I know nothing about the spray. So I go to my daily choice page that I didn't know was a replicated tool. And I watched that video and the first thing I thought, everyone I know has got to watch this video. I posted inside my group and my sales doubled in two weeks because Josh is good at explaining the sprays. <laughs> okay. So the next philosophy is very simple is they need to say, I can do this. So when you try to do stuff that's too crazy or too much, then the person goes, I can't be, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. So again, it's got to make sense to make dollars too. They got to say, what do you do? Tell me what you do to get these results. And three is they got to say, I can do that. What I love about our product is people open it up, put a couple of drops on their tongue and they're going like, it makes sense. That looked easy. I can do that. So there you go. So I wanted to cover this because every one of this parts covers in these tools. So 30 years ago, I just knew that I needed to keep it that simple, Jenna's. You know, keep it silly, you know, keep it stupid, silly, whatever. <laughs> keep it simple, stupid, whatever. It's like my whole thing was if I could complicate this really easy, and if I complicate it, then the way that I show people the business is the way that they say they can't do it. So if I talk to them face to face out in the street and throw up on them, I, that, that person might get the product. They're not going to duplicate. <laughs> if you do home meetings, hard to duplicate. Uh, Three-way calls, there's a lot of stuff that people do out there that work, but they don't duplicate. So if your people don't go, is that all you do? I can do that. You're in trouble. So now let's talk about the Zoom. Zooms really simply allow me to say to somebody, can you intro me? Sure, great. Let's set a time, tell everyone you know that you're gonna interview and talk to a multimillionaire. Now you don't have to be a multimillionaire. You can just be an expert from afar. So you say, listen, I'm working with somebody, they're in this company, it's growing like crazy over 700%, you gotta check this out. So I'm interviewing this person on Thursday night at 7.30. You get the Zoom link, and you send it to that person and teach them how to post on all of their messaging. 
and then they all go to that Zoom, and it's just what we're doing here. What's unique about the Zoom? You can stream it on Facebook, which Jen is doing. You also can record it. So after we get recording done, I get to put it up on the server, send it to the person that I did it with, and bingo. So the very first week we got in the company, I brought in Melody Riba. Melody Riba, within three days, we scheduled a Zoom. She had 100 people on it, so I immediately text Jenna and Joss going, please, 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 I know we've only been in for a little bit, and the incredible leaders and, and uh, givers they are, they jumped on it. Now, I recorded it, then put it on Facebook. That video today has 119,000 views. So it's making me money every single day. It also duplicates because now – Melody doesn't need me anymore. Her team doesn't need me anymore. They just go, hey, you need to look at this company. I did an interview with the owners and Robert Hollis, can you check out the video? And it's still on Facebook today. So there's another thing is the trainings. So now how many times every time you bring in a new group or a new group of people, they go, can you do a game plan for me? <laughs> you know, can you tell me the first steps to do? Well, great. Put this together for your team. Your team could be one person, right? And, and you put this together, and then what you do is go through exactly the steps to get started, and now you get to record it, and now you have it on there. What other things could I use Zoom for? Um, frequently asked questions. You know, anything that I want to use it for, I now have the recording, and I got it in a place where I can put it up and also stream it on, on, on live. So that's the power of Zoom. What you want to do is teach your people how to use this. And when they use it, then guess what? They got it going. Now, Facebook Live is really easy to use as well, you know, and it records it. And so you can do that as well. But once you have it on Facebook, then hard to take it someplace else. Facebook is really smart in making it um, – just render for their platform. So then trying to take that video off and put it someplace else. Jenna now gets to use these trainings forever. So she's recording it. So that's the power of Zoom. You want to think about, you know, what could I do to allow everyone else to say those three things? So right away, people go, I can do a presentation. Well, great. Invite people to the link, introduce me and let me do it. Then we can use frequently asked questions later and we're done. So there's the power of Zoom. Yeah, and I love that because in the old school way of networking, it was three-way calls, right? Um, yeah. That's how I learned. In fact, early NBC days, I had no success story yet, so I learned very well how to tell Josh's story, yes. uh, his previous story. So I was like on repeat, and it was literally just call after call after call saying, I'm going to introduce you to this guy that is, and I edified the crap out of him, right? And it was just, let me see if he has a few minutes for you. Hang on. Let's see if I can get him on the phone. I'm standing next to him. But they don't know that. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> and then it's just a cycle. But the problem with three-way calls is no one's really recording them, right? And they're not personal. And you can't really relate other than that one person that's on the phone. Right. And Zoom, you're recording it. It's face-to-face. -face, so you're making more of a connection. They see that you're a real human and not just a bot, you know? That's just recording a sales pitch and it's highly duplicatable because even if you're not the person in the video, what the ideas that are expressed in the video are very relatable so that your team can share them, whether that's you in the video or not, because the message is still the same. And right. once it's done, like you said, once it's recorded, you have that tool forever. And now you're really in a residual kind of mindset with your business versus having to hustle your entire life. Right. And the whole goal of right. marketing is to, Possibly. And I also do it, I also do it for one-on-one -on -one game plans too. So now I bring in somebody and they go, oh, can you just bring me? And I go, why don't you invite your team? We'll do an Q&A and then I'll put together a game plan for you exactly what to do. Well, then I ask their permission, can I record this? No one's ever told me no. And then I say, now I got this for your archives. So how many people keep coming back to you every month and going, you know, Jenna, if I could just get a moment of your time for another game plan. Well, I get to do this once and it's recorded. Jenna, check the video that we did. <laughs> the game plan hasn't changed. 
<laughs> no, and that's the same thing. In, in early hemp works days, it was the same thing. Uh, people wanted to ask me all the same questions over and over again. What's in the bottle? Where's your test? Blah, blah, blah. Every single question, it was just a cycle over and over again. And I finally was like, I'm going to just make a video, put it up there, answer all the questions, and now I'm done. And now yep. I don't answer that many questions. I share tools, which is exactly yep. what I'm suggesting. So I love that for sure. So our second question I've got for you here is about generating leads and sales using the system. So how do you generate leads using the My Daily Choice system? Because you are using it. Yeah, you have your own mm -hmm. kit, of course, which yep. you created yourself, which we helped put together. But uh, anybody can use any of the pages. It works the same yeah. way. So how are you creating leads to gener generally just pump back into your business? Because uh, by now, after 30 years in the industry, right, for sure you've run right. out of your warm list. Your friends and yeah, family. Go, I go through that in three days. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So how do we get more leads after that with the system? <clears throat> well, one of the things that I love doing is, is again, I'm constantly doing posts. One of the things I think that people try to do is they try to reinvent the wheel. Instead of just following someone like Jenna or the Butlers or uh, – all the other people out there. I mean, I have this new uh, group, uh, Emily and Kurt Barfield, you know, they're, they're, they're about ready to hit 50 K. And it's like, I've learned so much from them and you Jenna, because it's like, I never ever posted about the product ever, 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 ever. And so when I see a post, I have 99 problems and CBD took care of 86 of them. It, it's like, I love this allows people to be very creative. And what you got to do is you got to stop thinking about what other people are thinking. The sooner you can become you and just post you. So that's why I learned so much from the Butler. So what I do still to this day is um, I have a fan page. And what I do with that fan page is I'll come up with something creative that I can consistently run a little bit of Facebook advertising toward. Now, when I first started out, it was $2 a day. <laughs> and so people go, I can't afford to do that. Make sure you understand the policies and procedures because people get their pages shut down if you go against them. And it's rougher now than it ever has ever, ever, ever been. So if you didn't know, their stock fell in half. So, you know, they're doing a lot of changes. But from 30 years, Jenna, when I first got involved in marketing, the very first thing my mentor taught me how to do is advertise. And it was an ad, unbelievable, uh, ex-auto mechanic, now makes six figures a year, looking for five people, no experience necessary, and phone number. So I know that there's a lot of things that I can put very inexpensive ads to. Now, for those of you who say I don't have money, go to Google and put in free classifieds. The last time I looked, I think there was 31 million pages of free classifieds, and they're in your area. So... You can now come very creative in putting something in there and just again using the system with the free, you know, tour. Um, the video that's in that free tour was done with Zoom. <laughs> and it like we jumped all the leaders on there. I mean, Joss and Jenna are not only incredible owners that I've worked with for 30 years, but they listen to the field. Uh, most people I know don't, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> it was neat when as soon as Joss and Jenna seen that, Josh goes, okay, we're going to, we're going to bring the other leaders on and put that video together. So most companies don't have an effective presentation. I just tell people, if you get 2000 people to watch that video, you're done. So now do you want to take 10 years to do that or try to take some focused time to see if you could get more people to go through that tour and watch that? Um, people might not like this next statement I say, but I am focused on getting new eyeballs because I'm looking for the right people at the right time. People that have money, center of influence, they have time, they're dissatisfied, they're not whiners or complainers, they take personal responsibility. I know what my avatar is. I just told you. All right. So I'm not saying I'm just looking for people to help because then you attract those people all day long and they need help. A lot of help. <laughs> is, is there any way, Jenna, that I can make three grand to pay my mortgage by the end of the month? I know I only have nine days. It's like, come on. Right. So I don't follow up. People say there's follow up, you know, the fortunes and the follow up. If you take time to read the emails that Josh put together, 
there's so much psychology in the system. The person that has the most pre-enrollees every single week is going to win every single time. Not sometimes, all the time. So you got to focus on getting people there. And so that's the things that I do to generate leads. Uh, the other thing is really quickly is the Facebook group. Um, I'm, I'm bold. I'm a team player. Uh, if you guys put in vision team or forward slash MD, MDC vision team, that is a open, open, open group. Every one of you that watch this video can get in that group. And what I do there is I teach people to add the people to the group for free to give away my gifts. So I put together trainings that I've made $300,000 on and I'm giving those away in that group for free. So now you can say to a person like Tony Robbins, if you're on their page or whatever, like the Bart Bartler said, is you could go, well, how long have you been with Tony Robbins? About six years. And it's like, have you heard of Robert Hollis? No. Well, I actually am being mentored by him and he allows me to give away his book, Industry Training. Can I plug you in this Facebook group and just give you the gifts? Hell yeah. And so I'm using the same things I spent millions of dollars on on the online world now in the, in, in, in the uh, network marketing world. So people add people to that group, they start going through the units and then all you gotta say is, oh, by the way, Robert will ask you to get a link from me for the free tour of the system that they, that they have. Here's my link, bingo, you got a free tour, then I even have a video that you send to them after they take the tour, because my goal is to make sure to close them for you. So. <laughs> I love that. And if I could just break apart some of the things you've just said. Please. So you're, you're saying you get leads because you utilize our fear of loss system. Yes. And I happen to be a fear of loss type of leader, just like you. So when you're describing, I don't follow up. Some people would be like, well, what is wrong with this man? We all know fortune's in the follow up. I don't right. either. And the reason why is because you're sorting them. You're pre-qualifying them. And if they can pass your first test, then they can go to step two. And if they can't get through the first door, then they're probably not worth your time. And if they can get through that door and and take simple directions and follow the simple instructions that you give them, then they are worth your time, right? And then you can train them. And I do the same yep. thing with, with my people as well. And it's like, listen, uh, you have to come from a position of being ready to change your life. You have to be uh, at that level. So fear of right. loss is what we use in our system. And if you're unfamiliar with the way the system works, we give you capture pages. If you don't know capture pages, it's simply a, just a page where you can enter in your email address, your phone number, your name, and then that email address is going to be sent through our system where you're going to get autoresponders that have been, like Robert said, created by Josh that are going to fear of loss you to update yes. you by Thursday at midnight. And the reason being is because you're cooking it into the system where the rest of people that are affiliated with, let's say Robert is the guy on top, right? Uh, then his team is going to be building your your business, right? All the spillover kind of gets trickled in under there. And if that sounds like Cheney's, I'm sorry. Uh, but simply put, <laughs> the way our system works is you enter into information, you're getting follows followed up through the system so that you don't necessarily have to do it. And whoever comes back to you and says, hey, what is this pre enrollee thing that I just did? Hey, what is this? I got to upgrade by Thursday. What is this? I've got 100 people already under me and I haven't done anything. Tell me more. So now, instead of you're chasing them, they're chasing you. And any kind yes. of time you can create the interest, you can create the, you can pique their interest and you can get them to chase you. You have the upper hand. And if you have the upper hand, you can close the sale. Yep. Because the Just work, like, yeah. yeah Ter Terry and I, I think in the first two weeks, we, we pre-enrolled a little over 312 people and 80 of them upgraded. And so... You know, so we know that, that, that success loves speed, right? So when people bring people in and then you're not focused and excited about just bringing people in, find the right people at the right time, say as little as possible. Well, today I say chat as little as possible <laughs> to as many people as you can. Um, if you don't create that, you know, Aaron and 
Kathy Parker, they're just destroying it. They're so amazing leaders. And they even took it one step further. You know, he was actually doing posts from his phone and his whole entire phone was nothing but my daily choice, my daily choice, my daily choice, my daily choice. And he's like, look at, you know, I got 22 people and he was posting that on his Facebook and everybody's going, well, how are you generating all those people? And the system work, not us, you know? So I tell people and I'll say it till the day I, I'm buried is that I'm good at this profession, but there's no way I could have did the results that I've done in the last five months without your guys' system without your guys' capture pages. I remember immediately asking Josh, what is the best converting page you have? And he says, right now it's Hempler's Bizop. So what did I do? I did what he told me. <laughs> There's a lot of people going, well, I don't like that page. No, I wanna make money. I wanna help people with the product. I want people to get results. So I'm just gonna do what Josh says. So there you go. There you have it. The other thing you mentioned too was that you give them freebies in your group. So what that says to me is you're creating value and yeah. how you create leads. You give free value away. I don't charge people for training on my Facebook wall ever. I don't have paid training anywhere and there's nothing wrong with paid training. Of course, if you reach a certain level, absolutely should charge for your training because you're at that level. But right. if you're giving free value away, you're getting people always interested in what they can learn from you. And that creates kind of the expert from out of town because now we understand that you know something that we want to learn, right? Yep. So I love that. Um, lastly, just to touch on what you just said, was you are targeting your audience, whether you know it or not, right? You say you use Facebook ads, and the only reason you use Facebook ads is because you're targeting your audience. You're cherry-picking the networkers out. You're cherry-picking the people that have entrepreneur, uh, I don't know, spirit. You're looking for those people and you could do that for free on your personal page if you can just get in the habit of sorting through your list. If you can feel free to, to delete your mom and all the negative people that are in your list, if you can sort through all that and only add people that are in alignment with your target market, then you can achieve the same results as a fan page would, except, I mean, it's going to take a lot longer. So Roberts is, says, hey, I use a fan page because I don't want to wait. I want results today. So I put fuel to the fire, just add a few bucks in there, target my market, and boom, now I have duplication. So yep. it's genius, but um, these principles are tried and true. And Robert didn't reinvent the wheel. Like he said, these are not like proprietary like secrets of the industry. This is something that has been ingrained in us from the beginning. Yes. And we've just now used the tools and systems to take the old school principles and make them relevant today. So I love that. Absolutely. Let's move on to our next question, which is, what the heck is documentation beats conversation? And why is this important for your brand? Why, first of all, why did you trademark all of that? And that's your slogan. And why do you think that's important when you're using a tool or a system? Why do you think it's important to say, here's the proof, so let's not have a further discussion because it's right here. Why is that important for you using your branding and how well, like, like you said, the, I, I've st I'm stepping on the shoulders of giants that were my mentors. Um, my top five mentors, the first one was Roger Pence. He's a billionaire. He's won the Indianapolis 500 17 times with 11 different drivers. And I worked for him as an auto mechanic. So he, would, he was the one that said the phrase, documentation beats conversation. And, and it was like, no hype, no BS, it's just straight facts. So his whole thing was show your documentation, prove it to people. Because if you can do that, then guess what? All of it's gone. Well, some of you are saying right now, well, wait a minute, you know, um, I haven't made any money. I haven't done anything. Well, guess what? 30 years ago, I was the same guy. Broke out of mechanic, cast on my leg, filing bankruptcy. You know, what, you know, girlfriend's gone. That's my, now my wife, you know what I mean? Uh, got my kid sent back to her mom from my first divorce. I mean, my life was freaking awful. And thoughts of saying, I don't even know why I need to be here. So I took my wife and I actually gave her a one-way plane ticket to go back to Montana because I didn't believe that I was worthy enough to have her. And so I was crushed, right? And so when I meet a mentor and he turns around and says, I said, I'm not a salesperson. I'm introverted. I got three freaking friends. You know, how am I supposed to do this? And he showed me his documentation, Jenna. And he says, do you think you could edify and promote me? And I go, what the hell is that? And he said, tell my story 
get people in front of my video. Well, what if they ask me questions? Look at them and be humble. I'm not even close to making the kind of money I'm proud of. That's why I'm learning from this guy. <laughs> and so when he told me to get 2,000 people in front of the video, Jenna, all I did is walk up face to face with people because there wasn't internet or cell phone, you know, and I'd walk them and say, hi, how are you? And they go, great. I go, my name's Robert, what's your name? And they would tell me. And I'd say, could you do me a huge favor? I'm helping a company expand. It's growing like crazy. And we're looking for people that would like to make extra income. Do you know of anyone like that? And they go, uh, what is this? I go, why are you interested? They go, well, it depends on what it is. I'm working with Bill. So Bill Golden, Jim Rowan, Larry Thompson, Larry Huff, uh, Jeff or Bertie, these guys were my uplines. So Jeff or Bertie made 100 million in commissions. So I'm still working to get there. <laughs> and so I thought, I got to peek him, get him excited, get him in front of Bill. Peek him, get him excited, get him in front of Bill. So documentation came from, I would even say this statement and wanted to since I've been in, in, in NBC, is I want to tell the world that my sponsor is better than yours. And I believe it. <laughs> so I said this statement from day one when Jenna went met with me and I, we did a Zoom the first time that we met. And, and Jenna was nice enough to show me her back office. And this is what I said. Documentation beats conversation. I made 73000 in a week. And that week, Jenna made 159000 I'll never forget it my entire life. So I looked at Jenna and I went, here's an individual that's made twice as much than I have in a week. Documentation beats conversation. So that's why I didn't second guess the system, wondered whether it worked or not, tried to figure out what capture page you use. No, I used everything they already have. Point guide direct, point guide direct, point guide direct. Still to this day, my team probably gets mad at me. It's like, Robert, this person needs to understand the compensation plan. Yes, go into the group. Josh has got a video on the compensation plan. Watch the owner talk about the comp plan. <laughs> He's the one that designed it. So documentation for me is key. When there's people out there that are not documented, won't show you their documentation, and they also don't have any stories of other people they've gotten success with, then they're not documented. So for those of you that have failed in your life, you're not having the courage to ask people, show me your documentation. Let me see what you're doing. Who have you helped? Because when they can't tell you, you shouldn't be listening to them. You should be listening to Jenna. Because when I was looking for a sponsor for my wife, Jenna was posting all these people's posts of people that were getting rank advances. She was helping people succeed. That's how we picked Jenna. So I love what you've said here about documentation beats conversation and how you use it in your business. But what I really like, what I heard was that, I know this sounds kind of overused in this industry, but you were 100% coachable. And that is kind of rare when, I mean, when I'm going and looking for somebody to mentor, that's the first thing I'm looking for is somebody that's going to be coachable, right? And the reason is yeah. because I've been through too much crap at this point and I don't have time to waste on fixing you. So you have to be ready to fix yourself. And you were at that point in your life where it was like, okay, I know nothing, you know everything, so let me learn from you, right? And I, it, it seems like in this industry, we have – more people that are focusing on fixing their brand or their appearance than they are really learning the trade itself. And you can't be a leader without being a follower first. You have right. to really learn how to be mentored first before you can start mentoring other people. And for those of you that are new to this industry or, or whatever, you have an upline and maybe they're not the best and don't use that as an excuse because guess who doesn't have an upline either? Um, and Robert has been extremely self-sufficient because, because I'm busy. So don't blame it on that. But there are people in your company, in our company right now, that are successful, that you can leverage. Um, like Robert said, I leverage Josh's video. Yeah. You can do the same thing because that video is available to everybody, right? Um, when I was learning from Josh, he was my mentor in network marketing. I was his mentor in life. So that's how we're union kind of worked out. 
And I think that's kind of what women do anyway, but we fix our men and they fix us. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a growth process, but you know, he told me that if you're going to do this, if you're going to do network marketing, you got to quit your job, you got to sell your business and you got to do this full time and, and learn the directions. And the first thing out of my mouth was, let me tear apart all the reasons why you're wrong. I wasn't coachable. <laughs> I was like, let me figure out a way to like debate you on all of this stuff. And we used to live, I tell this story all the time, we lived in the same apartment complex in separate apartments and we would go downstairs and get our mail together. And when he would open his mail, checks and checks and checks would be coming out. And I would open my mailbox and bills and bills and bills would be coming out. And I would say, why are you making all this money? And I'm not, you're not like extremely like talented. I don't understand how you're doing this. And I'm not. And he said, when I was 18 years old, I met a guy that was successful and I didn't question anything. I just did what he said. Yep. I saw his documentation and I followed it and I said, okay, you know, it's time for me to humble myself and learn from the beginning. And I may have a marketing degree. I may have top sales background in corporate America, but I don't know anything about this industry. And if you come to the table with admitting, I don't know anything, talk to the guy right. who does. Talk to Robert who does. Talk to Kristen and Travis that do. Talk to these people that do. I don't know anything. I'm brand new. Talk to them and they'll give you the message directly. Because if I try to tell you directly and I'm new, I'm going to make it sound like a pyramid scheme. Yep. I'm going to distort the message and it's not going to come out right. So that's why we edify our, each other. That's why we bring in the big guns to kind of support you because you're not there yet. But when you get there, right. and if you do that enough times, your mentor, your upline, your person you're edifying is going to help you collect those checks. And then you have your own documentation. And now from that point, you get to create those videos and you get to share them with your team. And that's the, that's the secret to it, right? So... It, it, it totally is. And, and one of the things, Jen, if I could just add shortly, the whole concept of apprenticeship is gone. Right. In this industry, mm -hmm. it's not gone anywhere else. So if someone wanted to be a mechanic, they wanted to be a medical, they wanted to be a lawyer, they want to go into martial arts, you start out as a white belt and you have no damn choice. You see what I mean? And you learn the basics. I don't want to learn the basics. I want to start my own brand. Then find another mentor. Get the hell out of here. You know what I mean? So any other place in the world, you have to be an apprentice. What's unique about our profession, if someone would be the best, best person, I, speed. This company is amazing at speed. I, I made $10,200 my first 45 days 30 years ago. I made 258,000 my first year. Now get this, I made a million before I was 30 and I never was the deal. I was trying to pull off to be the first guy with a mullet, yes it's in the 80s, and I had a beard, drove my motorcycle, and I was gonna rock the stage in my leather jacket. I rode motorcycle every freaking day back and forth to work since I was 16 years old. And so I was not going to change for the world. I wasn't going to put on a suit. I wasn't going to shave. I wasn't going to cut my hair. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, ask Terry. You know, so when those things started happening, it, it, it upset her. It really, really upset her when I cut my hair, shaved my face, got a suit. She even called it a monkey suit. She's going like, why would you ever sail out? <laughs> but... At that time, I wanted to make a little more money. And so I knew that the world perceived me not as a guy that was in a biker gang, <laughs> but I needed to show some Wall Street people how, how to look, you know? So it, it, it was a, it's a fun trip, but I edified and promoted Bill on everything. And people would get mad at me, Jenna, when I went to the convention because they would give out all the awards and my downline would look at me and they go, why'd they forget you? because it was like I was waiting for the top ones to be. And I'd walk across the stage as top five, and they would look at me, so you're a mechanic from North Dakota, my ass. You know what I mean? And I'm going like, I was making $38,000, $40,000 a month, and I wasn't telling anybody because I was too busy edifying and promoting Jenna. You see what I mean? Because it's like, no, watch Jenna's video. So someone says to me today, tools, point, guide, and direct. What's the difference between your CV and others? Jenna's video. 
Jenna's video. Wham! You know, I, and and I don't know why people want to be the deal. It's ridiculous to me. <laughs> Yeah, and there comes a time for that where you get to be the deal. I think when, and, and you've said this to people before, right, when you hit super affiliate, then you can be the deal, right? Yeah. So until then, you're in training mode. You're learning from the best. You're learning from the people that are 250K affiliate. You're look, looking at people that are already doing it. You don't need to come in as an executive and, and try to figure it out. We've already got it planned out for you. You just got to follow the path. That's all it is. So, all right, so let's move on to our next point. And we've only got two points left, and we're done deal here. So Cool. This kind of actually leads right into what we were just saying, which number four is social proof and edification. So we've kind of mentioned this already, but what, why is it so important that, that somebody like you who has a track record of success edify your team who has no success whatsoever? You've, you're, you've taken Timmy from down the street who's just coming from a broken home and whatever else excuse he's got in the book. Why is it important that you build him up to – you know, online and, and, and how do we do that with, with the system and the tools? Why is that important? How do you promote your people and kind of give them the driver's seat? Well, one of the things is I know that this, what I do here is unique. Um, I'll take a brand new person and tell them to launch their business and pick a day and promote all their Facebook, social, everything, saying that I'm going to come on their Facebook live. So now what I'm doing is I'm edifying them in front of their family, friends, and everyone that's on Facebook. They're like, why in the hell would this guy do a Facebook Live? Now, they're short. They're 10, 15 minutes max. And all they're doing is, oh, my God, I got Robert Hollis on there. I hit him with a lot of curiosity, enthusiasm, uh, you know, curiosity and urgency. Tell people to post below or send them the private message. And so now I can launch people's businesses in a couple of days, and they got that edification. The next thing I do it said as soon as someone hits a rank of that, I'm going to interview them. What? Yeah. I'll get on Zoom and I'll reach out and say, listen, you hit 5K, you hit 10K. So as soon as Aaron and Kathy hit it, I'm interviewing them. Ron Deering, you know, as soon as they hit it, the Papas, I'm saying immediately, let me interview you. So they edified me. Now I'm giving them edification back. Mm -hmm. And in their mind, when the people see the video, I don't know what they're doing, but how'd they get this guy on here? And so that's magic. So it's not fun to promote and edify somebody that won't give it back. But you got to empower your leaders as quick as possible. So now all even the family or friends are going, how the hell did you hook up with this guy? You know what I mean? And they're not saying it, they're watching it. The other thing with social proof is that, that putting together a group like I did with the vision team. Now, here's what people don't understand. Most people come from the consumer mentality. So they don't know what I'm doing with that group because they don't understand the psychology yet. But if someone sent me a link and it says, check out this group for three videos and training and it's got 12,500 people in it. I'm going, what the hell is this all about? Now, when I log in, it doesn't mean that I'm watching the videos because the first response I get from people that are in the business, they go, there's a lot of training in here and some of the videos are over two hours. And I'm going, listen, all the people do is they see the group, they go in, they click on documentation based conversation, they see all the rank events. I think we've had you know, over 32 people and 52 rank advances in the last five months. They're all on one page. So now when people go in there, they see the news clips about CBD, they see documentation, they see Josh and Jenna. Why? Um, because they're the owners and the founders. I will edify Josh and Jenna more than anybody. I'll challenge you to try to beat me. Because I understand that I want to be fulfilled and happy. And what do I really crave most in life? Probably love, connection, appreciation, significance. I only get what I give. So if I don't make a big deal out of Josh and Jenna and I don't love up on them and I don't tell them how much I appreciate them and I don't keep telling them how, how grateful I am, then no one's going to ever do it to me. <laughs> and I like it. So, so, so I want to edify them. So the social proof is for you guys is the, the book until we go to convention, which I can't wait. But as soon as they go into uh, the vision team, 
they immediately see, because it's public, they can share everything out of there. They see the people, they see the documentation, they see the news clips, they see Joss, they see Jenna, they immediately see social proof. And for me, that's what I created to replace the home meeting, the weekly meeting, the super Saturday training. <laughs> that's all my social proof right there. And most people won't go through the videos, they'll just ask you for your link and take a tour. Then you send them the one after that, and now they've duplicated the system. They're like, okay, now let me get this right. I find someone, I edify and promote the leaders, I add them to the group, give them their free gifts. Build reciprocity. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. Right. Then what you do is tell them about all the stuff in it. They're sort of overwhelmed that there's that much stuff in it, but now you get them to take the tour. They see the video with Josh and Denny, they get exposed to this credible company. And now what you need to do is build that fast enough where they see people coming underneath them. What the heck is this? Cut off on Thursday, bam, upgrade. I don't see what's hard about this. I think it's pretty simple. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and you've, you have a very successful group and that's because it's got a lot of resources. It has a lot of tools. It has a lot of uh, places where people can jump in grab a link, point their prospects to it, and immediately start making money. Yeah. They don't have to reinvent anything. They don't have to, oh gosh, I gotta go hire somebody to make a logo. Uh, I gotta go get business cards. I gotta do, I uh, build my sales binder. I gotta get all a new notebook. I can't do anything until I have my office clean, right? We do all right. these little things instead of just getting to work. And your, your group is, is huge right now because you have all of these in here. You have the social proof, you have the edification, you have the, the leaders. And it's kind of like, you know, when we're driving from Nevada to California, there's a lot of desert in between there. Okay. There's Bakersfield and some other little towns that, you know, people drive on through. Now there's some like abandoned buildings and there's not very many cars out there. And then on other places, there's lots of people out front. So are you going to eat at the restaurant that's got nobody out front and it looks like an abandoned building, an abandoned group that has no activity? Or are you going to go to the one that has lots of people in it, that have lots right. of excited people that are fired up and ready to take the next step? Because that energy is contagious. Oh, you've totally. Created, you've created a group full of like-minded energy that just fuels your business. So, <clears throat> Yeah, when I first reached out to Aaron – and said I wanted to interview him and I wanted to help him launch his business. He was like, I, why would you want to interview me? And I said, because you just hit 510K. He has, yeah, but, and I go, yeah, but nothing. You know what I mean? Yes. So I did it with the people in his team and I've done it with people on my team. Now what they do is they got a video of me interviewing them, telling everyone how proud I am of them, that we're working together. And everybody's like, wow, I, w I need to get involved in this group just because I like the way I feel. These people are doing the right things. They're, they're loving up on each other. They're edifying from promoting each other. They're not trying to stab each other in the back. They're not trying to be competitive. They're trying to be creative. So, you know, find out what everybody else is doing and do the exact opposite. So works really good. Right. Yeah, we understand that philosophy exactly. All right, for my last question for you, and uh, this was actually Josh's question here, so he uh, helped put this training together. He knows you pretty well, I guess. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> you know, we, 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 were, we were talking last night, and I'm like, you know, help me figure out this tools and systems stuff. I don't ever talk about that. Even in our early presentations, you know, it's 2014, our initial like meetings that we would do, it was always his turn to come on stage and talk about the system. I never wanted to be a part of that. So I know how to direct a link and that was as far as I went with it. But this is what he said. He said, don't forget that you're interviewing Robert Hollis. Okay. So let's, let's ask him, how did you do it? How did you get to where you are now? I mean, how did you create 54 millionaires? How did you grow a, a million person, almost a million person team? How did you master network marketing to the degree in which you have and how is anyone else going to do what you've done? <clears throat> well, thanks Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that was like four questions, but you know, believe yeah. it or not, there's all these things that we read in life, including getting training and all that. And what I call them as pops. They're, they're points of passion 
where they flip our paradigm and nothing's the same ever again. And what I did is a really difficult time in my network marketing career when I left my mentor. Uh, you know, I learned a lot of great things from him, but I also learned what not to do. And in 90, I think it was, let's just say the beginning of 2000s, uh, the FDA took his company and shut it down. So I got to get my 13 minutes of fame on 2020 with Barbara Walters and Hugh Downs. And I was going after my mentor for the things that he did. Well, I say all that because one of the things that Bill was a master at is he was good at not only giving edification back, but he would take the time to work with someone long enough to get them results. And so I learned from him. So even though I built a team of almost a million people, I only personally enrolled 11 people and only worked with seven. So people are going, well, these got to be seven magnificent people. No, they weren't. My leaders were still three and four levels deep. So what I would do is I would treat it like a business. Oh, my God, what a concept. And so I treated it like a business. So if I was going to finally get someone that says, I'm sort of interested in what you're doing, my goal was to make sure that they got results as fast as possible. It's called GTR get them results. So my mentor taught me that imagine people with a clock on their forehead and from the same second that they get in, the clock's going backwards like a bomb and that's when they're out of the business. So that clock's ticking and you better get a pre-enrollee underneath them. You better get someone to upgrade underneath them. You better get them a check. You better get them results on the product because if you don't, they're gone. And I'm going like, so why would you want to build a team and then have it disappear, build it and then have it disappear, build it and disappear? And so I've talked to some of the biggest leaders, Jenna, in this whole profession. And so you know I've been out there for a while. And this is the first thing I say to people. I go, I'd like you to find someone on your speed dial that is a mid-six-figure earner. And when you call them, hand me the phone, and this is all I'm going to say, is Jenna, has Josh had anything to do whatsoever with your success? Absolutely. Now, when I say that to most leaders, they have two groups of leaders in their group. One group of leader that got sick and tired of that person taking all their credit, so now they're with a different company. Right. See, people think that leaders work for money. They don't. They work for praise and recognition. And so the other person that can't wait to get on stage to mention everyone but their upline. <laughs> so I've been in other companies. Why I'm good is because my uplines suck. It was the best. I wouldn't have seek, um, seeked out Bill Gould if my mentor, if my upline was good. No, they suck. I put people in front of them. They would do a three-way. The person would say, don't ever talk to me again. It's like, I'm going like, you know, because the person was egotistical or all this crazy stuff. So then that's when I really suffered because I went, I can't put people in front of my upline anymore. They're not reliable. They're not good. They're not serious. <clears throat> and, and I can't. So now I got to learn this. Well, you know, Bill's only got 15 years experience on me. So how am I going to do this? So when I went, met Bill and Bill goes, listen, just use my stuff. I went, hell yeah. I don't have to do any of this. I don't have to do the training, the quick start, the compensation plan, the explanation. When I seen Josh go through the game plan last, the week before, last week, I was like, my God. You know what I mean? I need to take that right away and, you know, and, and show it to people. No, most of the leaders in, the, in, in here will go, no, I need to study Josh and then do my own video. Whatever works for you, okay? I'm going to keep promoting Josh and Jenna. <laughs> so how I was able to build so many quick leaders is that my mentor got me to the top position in six months. So all I needed to do is get my people in front of him he got them there faster, and everybody goes, Robert, you're a genius. <laughs> so what am I doing now? Same thing. Same damn thing. I want everyone to be at the convention. I, I, would like to, I wish it was mandatory. I wish that you would lose your position if you didn't go to the convention because you just don't know how valuable it is. You really don't. And no one can tell you 
what it's like is be like, hey, listen, you know, have you ever tasted ice cream? No, I haven't. Let me explain to you how it tastes. See, there's two things that happen in our lives, logical and emotional. Significant emotional events are what you get when you will see a person walk the stage at MDC and they will touch you. And you're going to say for the first time, maybe ever, you're going to say, oh my God, if that person can do it, I know I can. You're going to have that turning thing in your life that you've been looking for called a breakthrough. <laughs> and you only get that from people that struggle to the emotional thing. They, you, you can't see it. So all of you have seen people win awards and, and music and on the Academy Awards, and then we hear them sort of get choked up, and we go, they're faking it. No, everyone that's watching that event that's sitting there in the front rows are bawling too because they feel the emotion of the journey that that person took to get there. And so you're trying to be a professional network marketer in MDC. You got to hang around the people that have a passion and emotion of it. And you got to attract it. You got to say, listen, if that person can do it, I can do it. And I don't know where else to experience that than a convention. So I would get my people, Jenna, in front of the person that was most like them. The other thing that I did is I'm a professional story gatherer. So I want to know everyone's background and I want to learn their stories. So from the Judy Stallings to the Barb Millers to the Butlers to everyone that's in this company, you got to get their story. You got to know their story. So as soon as someone says, well, I'm a mechanic, you're going, oh my God, Robert Hollis used to be a mechanic. If you don't think I relate to blue collar workers, you know, with my Hollisisms and not spelling correctly and no grammar, I got them. For all those people that are not Ivy League people, I, I can communicate with them very well. <laughs> so you want to collect stories. And when you collect those stories, now you go, oh, my. So now I know the butler's story. You know what I mean? And it's like, and people probably don't know this. And for some of you that are not getting this, I pray that you do. You guys have no idea, all the leaders that are already in this company, how much I'm grateful for you for carving the path in this company. And if you don't think I edify and promote you guys, I got a group right now and it might sound offensive, but it's not. And it's hashtag take Barb Miller down. <laughs> See what I mean? So Barb, thank you. Thank you. Judy, Set thank you. Barb set the bar. Let's just. Yeah. So, so I edify people all the time. So as soon as they go, well, Robert, you make money. I'll go, well, listen, look at, here's a screenshot of what Travis and Christine posted of the butlers. You know, not only they're about ready to hit super and, and they already have another position at 250 going to 500. Look at this couple. And so a lot of the leaders that might be thinking competitive, you might be a little silly because I'm using your stories like crazy and I wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for you. So that's how I get leaders locked in. I find somebody that's like them. I edify, do the interviews and I make them a leader. I show them as an apprentice, how to get to yellow belt, blue belt, green belt. My goal, Jenna, is to take a brand new person and get them to make so much money so quick that they can't quit. <laughs> <laughs> They're locked in MDC forever. <laughs> That's it. And, you know, very early on when I was learning with Josh, you know, he started 18. He made his first million by age 21. He had, uh, you know, hit 60,000 people in Ghana. He worked with 10. Beat me by nine years. He, he, he worked with 10. And I call those people his disciples, right? I have my disciples. You've got your disciples, right? And, and you're really just, you're pouring into these people. You're, you're literally, and we overuse the word mentor and network marketing professional in this industry. But what Robert does is he does brain surgery on people that he works with. He gets in and finds out what's your motivation, what's your fears, what are your weaknesses, and why are we still stuck here? Because in order to get from A to Z, you cannot stop at B and look around and look for the rest of the alphabet. You've got to keep going and you've got to keep taking the next step. And you're a perfect example of that. So thank you so much for taking your time 
out of your busy schedule and promoting all your leaders and, and all of your great success. So we appreciate you very much. And uh, we're going to wrap this video up. Any final words you'd like to part ways with us? With? Yeah, I think that you guys need to really understand Jenna, Joss's and my story and Terry's story. If you guys knew Terry's story, I mean, it's difficult for me to even talk about it without crying. But the people that have made the sacrifice don't ever look at us like we don't care. We care more probably for your success than you do, but we're also not going to let you cry and complain and, and stay there. So the velvet hammer, the tough love, is sometimes we can come across as not caring because we won't listen to your stupid little story of your past. Why? Because we all got a bad story. So the difference between Joss and Jen and Terry and I and some of the other leaders is we just got sick and tired of talking about it. <laughs> we, we, we realized that we weren't getting paid for it. So what we did is we realized that we needed to start to tell somebody else's story. And we only needed to tell that story long enough until we had our own. And here's where people mess up. Your number one goal in life is to tell your downline story. When you get to tell all of them, that's great. So Jim Rowan said to me very simply, he goes, Robert, you died twice in your life. Once is when you stop breathing and you're no longer existence on this planet. And the second time is when people stop saying your name. So do everything in your power to make sure that people are still saying your name. Make a difference in other people's lives and they'll be talking about you forever. So we give you permission to succeed in life. If no one's ever done that, let Jenna and I do it. I'm so honored and blessed to be on here, Jenna. Thank you so much. Get to the convention. That's right. That's a wrap. All right. Thank you, guys. And we will see you next week, week five, which I don't even know what we have next week. That's how busy I am. But we will see you guys next week, next Wednesday at 6 o'clock Pacific time. Thank you, guys, and have a wonderful evening. You bet. God bless. Thanks, Jenna.